Hey everybody, David the AI Guide here on Saturday and episode 55, Double Nickels. Today we're going to talk about AI, NASA, and the COVID-19 pandemic and the impact on things that NASA follows because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So the first area that NASA is looking at is food security. So where does AI come in for this? Well, normally uh, during the crop growing season, you have a lot of folks from the U.S. Department of Agriculture going out to farms and assessing what crops are being grown, how they're growing, what the expected crop yield is for the year, because this greatly affects commodity markets. And the prices of agricultural products fluctuate wildly sometimes. And when the pandemic hit, it's a perfect example of that because all of a sudden, all the inspectors couldn't go out to the farms, right? And so the, for quite a while, they didn't know what was being planted, what uh, the growth season was like during the whole spring, which is pretty crucial. And so NASA turned to their satellites and we've talked about this before, but NASA satellites now, there's so many of them that produce so much data that they have to use AI to make sense of all that data. So they were looking at food security and trying to figure out how much of each crop was going to be grown this year. And then as things improved gradually in parts of the country anyway through the summer, uh, they were able to follow up and do ground uh, surveys. But in the spring, the satellite data told them how much of each crop was going had been planted and gave them an idea of how it was doing relative to growth and what the expected crop yield was. And this helped stabilize and normalize all these agricultural product markets. So this was really important. As you guys know, uh, the, the food um, supply chains were severely disrupted. So there was a lot of fruits and vegetables and a lot of dairy products, but uh, meat became scarce. Why? Because of the outbreaks in the, in the plants, in the meat packing plants. So COVID has had a real impact on the food growing and distribution system this year. Big impact. Uh, the next thing that NASA has looked at is fire ecology. I think all of you are aware now that we've had what's probably the worst fire season ever in the Western United States, most specifically California, Oregon, and Washington State. And this is caused by lack of rain and unusually high heat. And we're going to talk later about what one of the factors of that might be. But reviewing this satellite data has been critical to determine where the fires were actively burning, how fast they were burning, how fast they were moving, because this terrain is often so rugged that there's no way they can determine these things from the ground. In fact, as we know, there were several towns that were completely overrun very, very quickly and burned to the ground like Talent, Oregon. And this is bad stuff. So satellites and AI, because of the avalanche of data coming from the satellites, uh, they're using AI a lot now to predict fire danger initially. And then once fires break out, what direction they're going to move and how fast. So AI is playing a huge role in fire ecology now. Uh, the next area is urban surface heat. So uh, unexpectedly, uh, city surfaces are getting hotter and hotter this year because of lack of traffic, lack of cars. So while uh, all the major cities were under lockdowns and people were not commuting into the cities, to their jobs that left empty parking lots all over urban areas. Also shopping malls that were empty for months, right? So that lack of cars, which the glass and metal reflect heat back into the atmosphere, 
the lack of cars caused more heat to be absorbed by the urban surfaces and therefore made the cities hotter this summer. And again, all this was figured out by using AI to look at urban landscapes from all of the NASA satellites. Uh, clouds and warming, again, uh, unexpectedly, uh, because there were so fewer planes flying, so much less cars, uh, there was much less pollution, and therefore less clouds, and that has caused warming, and that's been especially evident in the western U.S., but uh, in the northeast U.S., they had uh, probably their hottest summer ever. I don't think that's been officially determined or it just came out, but many areas of the northeast experienced their hottest summer ever. And again, this was due to lack of clouds, lack of rain, because paradoxically, the next one, air pollution and rain, all the satellites measure air pollution now, and they use AI to determine how deep the pollution is vertically in the atmosphere, which they couldn't even do until the last few years. This is all brand new, this stuff with air pollution and rain. So air pollution actually helps cause rain. Why? Because it creates particles in the air that attract moisture and that moisture precip precipitates out as rain. Um, so less air pollution, less rain, less clouds, more warming. These two are being studied by two different teams of NASA scientists, but are clearly interrelated and very important. Um, and then finally, water quality and ecosystems. So water quality has been impacted in a variety of ways by the COVID-19 pandemic. And one of the ways it's been impacted is that COVID-19 shows up in human, wa human waste before uh, people are symptomatic. So a week before there's a surge in an area by sampling uh, material at sewer plants, it's really gross, isn't it? But they're doing it. Um, by sampling this material at sewer plants, they're finding COVID and knowing that a major outbreak is coming. And also that COVID in the water ecosystem, because after the water is cleaned, it's discharged and not all the viruses are killed. So that puts it out into the aquatic ecosystems. And then uh, sadly, in an advanced country like the United States, a lot of the sewer systems are very old and very bad condition. The storm sewers in urban areas drain into those sewer treatment systems. And when heavy rain comes, the sewer system gets overwhelmed and they have to discharge untreated water into rivers and stuff like that. So this is happening all the time still. Uh, because of lack of investment in better wastewater treatment plants or sewage plants. Um, but water quality has also been affected for the better, again, by people staying at home, less driving, less airplane travel, all that stuff, all that pollution that's put into the atmosphere precipitates out into all the water sources. And that's obviously not ideal. So they've been looking to see what the impact of less pollution is on water quality this year, which is better, and water ecosystems uh, downstream effects of changes in water quality and what's happening at the sewer treatment plants. Uh, by the way, I just saw an article about this yesterday uh, the sewer treatment plants are also getting stopped up by people throwing masks on the ground and then they're being washed into the sewer, sewers draining systems. Don't throw your mask on the ground, people. This is a whole other problem. Uh, throw it away uh, because it's probably possibly COVID contaminated anyway. Because you got to remember, 
Many people are totally asymptomatic when they have COVID. Uh, however, many people aren't. Lately, 20% um, of the ICU admissions are people 30 and under. So if you young people think that you can't get really sick from COVID, you're dead wrong and hopefully not dead wrong. In fact, I was talking to a nurse two days ago and she told me that there was a young woman she knew because that young woman used to come in uh, with her father uh, when he was having cancer treatments and she saw a younger woman walk coming in to the doctor's office on a walker and she realized the woman was like around 30 and she looked vaguely familiar. So she went up to her and said, hey, do I know you? And the woman said, yeah, I used to come in here with my dad all the time uh, to help him get his cancer treatments. The nurse told me this 30 year old was in the ICU for 48 days. Her heart stopped twice. She was in bed for so long that she's having to learn how to walk all over again and almost died. So young people start to take this seriously because no one knows, no one knows who has no symptoms and who's gonna have life-threatening systems. And the only way you find out is by getting it and ending up in the hospital or the ICU. And you don't want that. You really don't want that. So uh, just has, sorry for the tangent, but this is reality. One of the things I try to do, especially for the younger people, is talk about how AI is being used uh, first so you can get a career that won't be impacted by AI. And there's a lot of great careers here. There's careers here in agriculture. There's careers here in fire management. There's careers here in urban planning and urban management, atmospheric studies, water studies, and water ecosystems. So there's all of these careers that will not be adversely impacted for the foreseeable future by AI and many who that will, but this is great areas that you should consider going into that won't be impacted by AI. But the other thing is I'm trying to give you guys reality and reality is both good and bad, right? The good about AI is it's going to cure diseases that humans would otherwise not be able to cure. The bad is it's going to displace certain jobs. So let's deal with the reality. This is why I went into the COVID speech. This is part of reality. COVID has caused all of these changes in food supply and the environment. And uh, so it's real. It's a real thing. And the prospects for a, vi for a vaccine realistically that's safe and effective is spring, summer of 21. So we're a long way off from that yet. So people, let's just be sensible about COVID, but lots of cool stuff going on here with AI at NASA and great career paths here for those of you who might be interested. Talk to you on Tuesday. Take care. If you like this video, please like it and please subscribe. Share it with your friends, and I'll see you on Tuesday.